This is just a quick little project here for uh, kind of a two inch magnet with a hummingbird design. Should be pretty quick to finish this in a couple minutes here. This uh, design is a little bit of an interesting kind of uh, abstract take. Like the hummingbird itself is pretty clear, but then just some interesting internal separations and, and chips to create the uh, carvable aspect of, of the design. Probably could have planned my order of cuts better here, but not a big deal. Kind of half finish up with one, get started on the next one in order to have a smooth transition on the outline uh, between the two. And then I'll come back in here and finish up this chip. area where it switches near the, near the face there. Come back in and finish carving out around the eye. Ideally, this would be a perfect circle of the eyeball uh, inside here, but really I think it's so small that any imperfection, any not roundness is probably going to be missed by the viewer once it's complete. So I'm not going to worry myself too much about how perfect that eye is. With how small these chips are, I'm not paying too much attention or uh, caring too much about direction of carving as far as grain direction as I normally would. With the how small and skinny they are, it just doesn't really end up making that much of a difference. There's not that much pressure of the wood against the blade, which is ultimately what ends up uh, causing issues with respect to grain direction. section of the tail here is mostly just a bunch of the same kind of crescent shaped chips stuck back to back. It's kind of hard to see, I'm sure, especially on camera, uh, the exactly where the separations are. I did draw with a pencil to to help myself envision 
where those are, but even still, with the pattern being on here is dark as it is. Pencil lines aren't doing all that much, but it's kind of a I don't know, organic shape here, so as long as I'm keeping the chips clean and uh, keeping those ridges between the chips intact, I don't think it's going to matter too much exactly how exact I follow that the lines as intended. to the wing, which is kind of an interesting one here where the different feathers on the wings are kind of separated here in the wing, but then they all come together into this single uh, kind of consolidated area. And this is a little bit bigger chip, so I am going to do my with the grain cut for that. And then all these just kind of come out from that. There's no separate, uh, there's no ridge or separation of that. So I'm just going to carve these right down and terminate inside that other body chip, just like that. And these get a little bit tricky with how close together they are and still maintaining that ridge between them. Just keeping that really light pressure on the knife. I feel like I say it in probably all my videos, but it's another good example of the importance of keeping the knife pretty much as sharp as you can for being able to get cuts like this with how delicate the, the chips and the ridges are that you really need the knife to be able to slide through the wood and, and slice through it effortlessly. If you're having to drag or push too much, you're going to end up just kind of obliterating tiny chips like these. clean up a little bit here with how small these are. I really want to make sure that I get those ridges nice and dialed in. Ah, and I ended up ripping out part of that. So that was what I was talking about, how uh, fragile those are. Uh, with the, the grain direction going this way, when you cut across this and this, it's really a uh, short length of grain, which is what provides the uh, strength. So there's the uh, tale of caution against going back and, and reworking on uh, chips that are probably good enough. Um, I'll see if I can carve out a little patch to glue in there and, and recarve it, but for now we'll uh, call that done. <laughs>